How many of you have heard the saying that if you do not pass this test, you're going to write it again until you pass it? We also have the saying that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the cold. Do you have any scripture reference for me that proves that? Can you show any part in the Bible that talks about qualifications or qualified? Unless my Bible is very outdated, I couldn't find anything about being qualified or qualified or qualifies. So, God is not making you write tests. God does not qualify you because you are called. And you cannot be qualified for this because once qualification comes in, it is something that you have achieved. Once you pass a test, it is something that you have achieved and then you are qualified. God does not work with those qualifications. If you are a doctorate, I take my hat off for you. I'm nothing. I'm just Pietrus. I'm not qualified, but let me, let, me, let me read to you what I am. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 2 verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Woo. Hallelujah. Do you read that? Justified? You are not qualified, but you are justified. Let's jump down to Romans 8. Romans 8 verse 30. All right, let's pick up from verse 27. It says, and he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints, according to in harmony with God's will. We are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Woo, hallelujah. For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he... Ah, come on, let's just go back. It is God that first loved us. He had a plan for every one of you. He has a plan for you right now. For those whom he foreknew, whom he loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his Son, and share inwardly his likeness, that he might become the firstborn amongst many brethren. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. Ah, equated, made righteous, putting them into right standing with himself. We are not qualified, we are justified. We are put into right standing with God. It's not about my qualifications that allows me to work in the works of God. It is my justification that cannot be achieved by my doing, but by His love. You cannot achieve justification. You can only receive justification. And those whom He justified, He also glorified. Oh, my goodness. You're not only just justified, but you're glorified. That's why your faces are shining so bright this morning. I can see the angels like singing behind your faces. You beautiful people, because once you realize that you are justified, you are not qualified for this. You are made in right standing with God, not because you are good, but because He is good. Oh, thank you, Lord. So, there is no test that you need to write. Man, I'm correcting myself. I, I said it last week. I've been through tests this last seven years. It's not tests. God does not test me. 
Why would he put me in test if he says he justifies me? Why does he want me to qualify if he says that he justifies me? So the things that we go through is just so that we can understand his love for us is far greater than the love that we have for him. Amen. That if he wants us to be able to see him, that means we need to love one another. So the things that we go through is not merely just to realign us, to show us the love of God. What we call test in this life, isn't it just a, a little bit of pruning in your life? To tell you, hey, maybe you're not bearing fruit in this part. It's not about qualifying. It's about removing. There is no qualification. There is only justification. John 15, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the wine dresser. I'm reading in the Amplified. Any branch, where is the branch? In me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, stakes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes. I think we read King James, so we think it, it only happens once. But you need to, in this time, read in the Amplified to see that he repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit. I don't think this is fair, because as soon as you start bearing fruit, you're going to go through pain to bear more fruit. You see, the thing about qualifications is we go to one another and says, Wees me your apple, let me see like your frug. How are you able to bear this fruit? You are not qualified for this. But today you can stand and say, I'm justified. That's why I'm bearing fruit. It doesn't matter if I still have shortcomings. It doesn't matter if I still miss it here and there. It's not depending on me what God does in my life. It only depends on am I plugged into him? Because he says, every branch in me Today we have branches standing on their own trying to bear fruit. It's not possible. Oh. All right, so be ready for uh, uh, repeatedly prunes every branch <laughs> that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. Sure, hallelujah. Verse three, it says, you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. All right, let's go back to John. If you want to see God, you have to love one another, because if you love God, God dwells in you, and you in him. Jesus comes and he says, dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. Live in me. Oh, come on. Live in me. For God sent his only son so that we might live through him. Jesus comes and he says, live in me. It's time we start, stop living for him and start living in and through him. Because if we live for him, we will always be stuck in tests and qualifications. We'll always be stuck in, I am not good enough yet. But one day I'll achieve the level of bishop. <laughs> dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Ah, just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in being vitally united to the vine, neither... Can you bear fruit unless you abide in me? I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from the vital union with me, you can do nothing. If a person does not dwell in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire, and they are burned. If you live in me, 
Abide vitally, uh, vitally united to me, and my words remain in you. All right, come on. Here it says, and my words. We have been cleansed, verse 3, and pruned already because of the word. Now he says, if my words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done to you. Psalms 119, I think verse 130 around there, it says, the entrance of your words give life. The entrance of your words. So how do we find the words of God? It is something that we live by. It's something that we, oh, we dwell in the word. The word dwells in us. It is the word that prunes us. It is the word that cleanses us. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I went to look at pruning. It's like, Pruning, I wrote it down. It says, it is cutting away dead, overgrown branches or stems, especially to encourage growth. It cuts away overgrown because the overgrown prohibits more fruit to come. So every now and then, oh, we, we find ourselves in a very uh, uncomfortable position where what we thought we have achieved is taken away from us or things works out differently. Why? Because we get overgrown with our own thoughts and emotions about what we are busy doing that we forget it is God that gives us the ability to bear fruit. Because once we start bearing fruit, we think we are good. And then we, ah, look at my fruit. You see my fruit? Ah, did you see this miracle I just did? Ah, did you see this guy I just prayed for? Did you see how I kept my peace in that situation? Or when we pass the test, we get overgrown with who we are, and we cannot bear fruits. So God, yes, it prunes us, because his word is living. And we, don't, we don't like the pruning, it's never been easy but it's of utmost importance for you. If my words remain in you and you continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will and it shall be done to you. And when you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified and show you and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. I have loved you as the Father has loved me. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, if you keep to obey my instructions, you will abide in my love and live on in it. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments, I live on in his love. Wow. I have told you these things, that my joy and my delight may be in you, and that your joy and your gladness may be a full measure and complete over Flowing. Thank you, Father. Let's just jump to Isaiah quickly. Isaiah 59. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. For he puts on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head, and he puts on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with a zeal as a cloak according to their deeds. Accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Unto them 
that turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, my words that I have put in your mouth, shall not depart of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed's seed, says, if you live in me, and my words remain in you. Come on, let's go back to Isaiah 59. We are not those that is separated of God because of our sins, because we have been justified. We have been made righteous. We have been glorified by Jesus Christ. Therefore, we have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is in this world, so are we. Because we are living through him, not for him. We are justified to live through him. We are not qualified to live for him. How can you ever be better than Jesus? It is impossible. Ha. As for me, this is my covenant or league with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is upon you and who writes the law of God inwardly on my heart and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouths of your children or out of the mouths of your children's children, says the Lord forever. My goodness. Now we have the word of God living within us. Oh, every branch that bears not fruit, he cuts away. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes and cleanses it repeatedly. And he cuts off the overgrown things. Man, face it, we are human beings. We have minds, we have thoughts, we have desires, we have issues, we have problems. We have things we go through. We have things that gets added on to us as we go through it. We have emotions. Man, today you can be set free, completely free. You can walk out of this house with the biggest smile that you have ever had. And you can go on for three weeks and all of a sudden someone just says something to you that doesn't sit right. And that small little something means nothing to you at the time, but you, it drops inside. And after a while, that thing grows. And it grows. And it gets overgrown. And before you know it, your emotions change. Who you are change. That's why we have the word that continually cleanses us, that continually purifies us. Ah, thank you, Father. So do you know the very same achievements, riches, status that you have achieved is the very same thing that will make you to stagnate and that will cause you to stop bearing fruits. How, Petrus? We love achievements. We love being recognized. Nothing wrong with it. But don't let that become your everything. Don't let your achievements become greater than the love of God. Don't let your title <laughs> come in the way of what God wants to do through you. Huh. I believe it's, it's good for us to go through these things. Why, why would he write in the Psalms, it says, ha, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters and he refreshes my soul. Though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
So though we do sometimes go through these things, we should not let these things dictate who we are. Because once we start giving into emotions, once we start giving into these tests and these qualifications and things like that, we move away from who we are called to be. And we become that person that needs to bear fruit, that needs to show it. You do not need to do anything. You are made to do it. God has designed you <laughs> to be like him. Hebrews 12. This is beautiful. <laughs> Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Come on. When he says looking unto Jesus. We look unto him because we are now living through him. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourge every son whom he has received. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. And what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastening, therefore we are all partakers and then are you bastards and not sons. Whew. All right. So the little pain that we are going through is not because God is angry. Man, I have a beautiful son, Seth, which sometimes you hear in the services. <laughs> Back home, things are a bit different because you don't see what happens there. My boy sometimes needs to be realigned. Because <laughs> if I'm going to leave him to do whatever he sees around him and do whatever he feels like doing, I'm going to leave him to just do that. Look at what this country has come to. Look at what this world has come to because they have taken a part out of it. They have taken the right away from parents to discipline their children. Look at the product. If God does not correct you, what will you become? <laughs> so, I know the potential that God has put in my boy. I know he's going to achieve great things. But I also know the road is still long. There's still a lot of chastening <laughs> that's going to take place. And it's not fun. Because when we go through it, it is a pain that he is experiencing. And for myself as well, it's not a fun situation. But I know it is needed to realign him to where he needs to go. That's why it says, let us lay aside all of these things that so easily beset us and let us look unto Jesus, which is the author and the finisher of our faith. Whenever we are chastised by God, whenever we are corrected by him, whenever we feel that, yo, there goes a part of blood, it's afgesnei, shink, ah, it hurts, but I realize, wow, okay, that's a part of me that should not be there. That's a part of me that's hindering the love of God to flow through me. Because the more blood we have, the 
more we qualified we are. The more fruits we produce by ourselves, the more we feel that we have the right to. We don't have the right to anything. <laughs> we have the privilege to everything. Because we are justified. Not because we are good, but because He is good. And I just want to read, Father. Romans 13, verse 8, it says, Keep out of debt and owe no man anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor, who practices loving others, has fulfilled the law, relating to one's fellow, meeting all his requirements. Verse 14, Verse 13, yeah. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly as in the open light of day, not in revealing, carousing, and drunkenness, and immorality and debauchery, sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify its desires and lust. So be clothed yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. So in, in Luke 18, we find the story where the rich, rich guy comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, what shall I do to have everlasting life? And Jesus, Jesus says, why do you call me good? There is no one good except God. It says, but do this, obey the commandments. And he says, I have done all of them. And he says, all right, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And the rich man walked away and he says, ah, this is a bit too rough. Because he was very rich. His branch had many leaves on. And he wasn't willing to let go. If you only know in this life, the little bit that we can acquire means nothing in the biggest scale of things. It's easier to let go because God has so much in store. Have you ever seen a branch that is pruned and taken care of, how much fruit it bears? And the ones that's just left out, they have fruit, but not to their full potential. This morning, I want to let you know you are not qualified for this. You are not qualified for the Christian life. You are not qualified to be a son of God. You are justified. You are justified. You are made righteous. Therefore, you are glorified. It's not about how good you are. It's not about what you are doing for Him. It's what you are doing through him. Amen. Jesus wants you to live through him. Father, thank you. Thank you that you give us the wisdom, Father, to understand the mysteries that is being revealed to us, Lord. That we'll truly be a people that lives through you and not only for you. Father, thank you that we have been justified by your blood. Thank you that we have been made righteous, right standing with you, God. Lord, this morning, thank you that we can again just realize that you take care of us, Lord. And that the purpose of our lives is to bear much fruit, not only fruit, but much fruit. So in the pruning, God, thank you that you give us peace. Thank you that you give us joy in the situations that we do not understand. But the, the road that you take us on, Father, is a road of glory. Thank you that you have every one of us in your mind. Father, thank you that your thoughts towards us is prosperous. Thank you that your love towards us is unconditional. 
precious Jesus, this morning as we're going to take communion, thank you for your body that was broken for us. Thank you that it is not our qualifications, but it's your price that you pay that justifies us. So Father, this morning cleanse us again. Renew us, Father. Restore in us our upright spirit. Cleanse our hearts, Father. Thank you that this morning we can live through you. Thank you that you live in us.